What's up? This is my second vlog. As you can see, I've dressed up for the occasion. Actually, my attempt at doing these things is really to be as unfiltered and unedited as possible. I just want to turn the camera on and go. And that's what I did just now. Uh, I've got the house to myself for a little while longer. I just woke up. I've been in Las Vegas all week. And uh, I was at a licensing expo. It's where you go to meet studios and companies and talk about properties that you want to get. You talk about business. It's, I go every year. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of, a lot of long days, a lot of meetings. And I was supposed to be home yesterday morning at 9.30, and I got home last night at 2 a.m. So a little groggy, a little unshaven, that, that type of thing, but that's what you got to do. But this week was really interesting, as licensing expo always is. Um, as I said, it's a lot of meetings, it's a lot of back-to-back -back meetings, uh, half an hour slots, just sit down, boom, 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 different companies, different people. And I used to think it was a lot of, I still kind of think it's a lot of pomp and circumstance. I mean, these things are crazy huge with big booths and lights and you know what's coming up in the next year and all these studios are really kind of showing off their stuff. And it's almost like Comic-Con, you know. Um, friends said it was kind of like Comic-Con without the nerds, which I thought was funny. But, you know, and I used to think, and I still do, again, in, in, in a way that all this business gets done back at the office. All the business really gets done over phone calls and emails. But going to the licensing expo, sitting down with people, having that face-to-face -face is really important. And that's why I like going. This year was a little bit different. I still had that experience, but I was able to spend some time with other people that would be considered competitors of ours. And I got to spend a little time hanging out and just talking. And it's very interesting. I think when you're online and you know people or businesses from afar, you developed some preconceived notions. You developed some ideas about who you think they are, which is an important word, who you think they are. But you don't really know them, and you start applying and projecting certain feelings and certain emotions onto those companies or people. And then if you just sit down with somebody, a face-to-face -face connection, that can change everything. Certainly it can confirm some of those feelings, but I feel like in most cases it can shatter them and you can instantly get a sense of where someone's at. So much more different than something on online. I, I think and I think a lot of us just you know, we don't have the opportunity to do that online a lot, you know, with people that we see all over the world, but, you know, with Facebook, I wish it was really face-to-face -face book, because I think if people sat down and talked to each other in person, a lot of the hate and fear and anxiety wouldn't be there. I, th I think people are applying their own fears and emotions and then projecting them onto people. So it was, it was good this week to sit down with some of them and just talk and figure out where other people are at and realize that other people feel the same way. And it's, it's very interesting. So, I don't know, for me, I feel like it's, you know, I'm, I come up with a mind where if you don't wanna say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Other people don't feel that way. Clearly, as I see in the comments of many, posts and things and I say control what you can control and maybe just maybe that other person is coming from a different place that you don't know about so I, I, I think it's worth giving it some thought um, hell just a couple months ago we had somebody post on our Facebook page that they was ne they were never gonna buy our shirts Again, because we suck, and I don't know, I think his shirt came to him a little bit later than expected. I, I don't remember the, the issue. I know he got it, but he was pissed. And, you know, I contacted 
Kimmy, our office manager, and had her take care of him, you know, make sure he was, you know, whether we had to refund his shipping or send a new shirt. I don't remember what it was, but we were going to take care of him. And it was still kind of in the back of my head, like, man, this guy was really pissed. So I gave him a call. I looked up his number, gave him a call, and uh, I was about to leave a voicemail, and he picked up, and the first thing he said was, dude, I'm so sorry. I really didn't mean that. I had some stuff going on this weekend. I had some other, you know, shipments that were late or something. And he basically, this was the straw that broke the camel's back, and he just basically decided to use us as the, uh, the punching bag. And I said, dude, I get it. And we talked, we talked for about a half an hour, 45 minutes. He'd come to find out he was from a couple hours away from here, so we're talking about that. And he was totally cool. And um, he wanted to apologize, or he wanted, actually he asked me to delete the comment on Facebook, and I said, no, we don't do that. I don't believe in deleting comments. Uh, but I did say, you know, if you wanted to post something in reply to that, that we talked, that would be cool, but of course you don't have to. And he did, and he was very nice about it. Uh, but it just goes to show you just never know where people are coming from. And if we all took maybe five seconds and just thought about it from their point of view, I don't know, maybe we could get along a little bit better. Till next time.